Next question is from Fulvio the Castle. Is lifting barefoot more beneficial in any way, or should I just stick to my favorite shoes? Sure. Yeah, it depends. I love it. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of, again, as a kid, trying to go help my dad do construction in the summer. So this is the only time I'd ever do it during the, during the year I was in school and whatever. And I remember him telling me, because I would wear gloves sometimes to handle, you know, heavy things and tiles and concrete and wood. He'd tease you. And, uh, and he'd say, you know, I never used them when I was a kid. My hands just got really tough. Now, of course, my dad at nine years old was doing this and didn't do with this into the summer. So he did this all the time. That's what he did. He worked. But I'm like, oh, cool. I'm going to get my hands tough. So I didn't wear gloves and I immediately shredded my hands <laughs> to the point where I had to tape them up and wear Band-Aids and, glo and gloves again. And my dad's, you know, he kind of laughed and he goes, you know, I should have told you, you got to go slow. You can't just jump into it because you're not ready. This is what happens to some people with, with barefoot training yeah. is that they go, oh, if I train barefoot, it'll strengthen my feet and my ankles. And, but meanwhile, they've always trained in supportive shoes. Yeah. They've always had some kind of a heel rise. So then they go all the way barefoot all the time. And then they wonder why they develop plantar fasciitis mm -hmm. or hip issues or knee issues. Too hard, too fast. You are not ready. Like this takes some time to, to get to because if you look at like an anatomy picture of the bottom, just the foot, forget the ankle and everything else just the bottom of your foot, it is covered in muscle. Those muscles need to be strong and stable enough to support you to do your heavy lifting that you normally do in your supportive shoes. Yeah. I just, so. I wish I did it more. I mean, there's definitely, a, it's beneficial to work your way in that direction, I would say. Definitely, like, takes a while. So just walking around barefoot, um, getting used to that is the first step. Uh, but then sort of building upon that, but to to be able to to feel your way through and connect to the ground and and stabilize with all those little muscles in the bottom of your feet and also like articulate your toes and and find those those points of of you know like ground forces so what happens when you get in up into power and the pinnacle of your training is you know how you can distribute you know that force and and, and to be able to to create more ground forces it starts through your feet and what your feet are doing are so crucial and essential and so this is stuff that i try to teach athletes all the time and so it is beneficial to, to get rid of the shoes so you can really kind of feel your way and feel like the the, the forefoot the, the the pad of your foot and you know when you're when you're doing anything athletically you're never flat footed you're not you know your heels aren't on the ground in fact most positions like out on the field if you're if your heels are on the ground on yelling at you yeah, yeah because you're not able to to transition, you're not able to cut and, and move and be dynamic. And uh, so, you know, these are all considerations to, to have, but there's definitely, uh, you know, there's a progression. So you just got to really like slowly, gradually introduce yourself to just walking around a lot more frequently, adding frequency to being barefoot, then start to kind of load, you know, basic exercises like lunges, like, you know, things where, uh, you, you know, you start adding dumbbells and then you start doing, you know, unilateral training, then work your way to the heavy loaded barbell situation. So this is close to home for me because this has been my journey the last like five or six years. I had uh, terrible foot strength, had terrible ankle mobility. I couldn't break 90 degrees in my squat, uh, and my my feet were sleepy as shit. And I wanted to get to a place where I addressed and fixed all that. It just didn't happen overnight. Like when I got to the point where I was working out barefoot, I did a lot of just barefoot walking first. And I would start there. Very few people, like so people hear us talk about that or they see a video, maybe one of us posts and we're working out barefoot. And they're like, oh, I'm going to start doing that. It's like, well, what you didn't see was that I just got in the habit of when I'd come home, I would just for now and took my shoes off. Like when was, how many people walk in their house and then just they, take their shoes off for the rest of the day. They decide like, oh, I'm home from work. I'm mm -hmm. not going to wear shoes the rest of the day. How many people walk barefoot outside? Yeah, and then go outside. Nobody. Right? Right. So it started like that for me where I, I would just, as soon as I was done working and I'm home, shoes off. And then I would walk around my yard and be outside and I would just stay with my with my shoes off as much as I can. If I, I love going to the beach and walking in the sand uh, with no shoes on. And so I just started doing that a lot before I even decided to exercise. So there was no exercise. And then when I even started to exercise 
with no shoes on. It started off with mobility work, not loading the mm -hmm. barbell back squat. It was just me doing ankle mobility and walking, doing farmer walks, real light stuff and working on posture, stability exercises. That was when I was working on that jump to balance stuff. And so I was doing a lot of balancing things with barefoot, but not loading a lot of stuff. Once I got my ankle mobility in a good place, my hip mobility in a good place. I had been walking around barefoot. Then I started to load the barbell and actually squat barefoot like that. But that was a progression over, you know, two, two and a half years and, of doing and, that. And I mean, you, you really need to stress that because I remember you you going mm -hmm. through this, especially in the beginning. And there were a couple of times you had to take a couple steps back. Yeah. Because I remember like at one point you're like, oh my God, I could squat barefoot all the way down. Then you added a little bit of load. Oh, got to back yep. off again because yep. now my hip's bothering me. It takes a while. And kid, consider this. What you train is what you get good at. So what do I mean by that? So if you look at like um, like a boxer, look at a boxer who trains with big gloves on. They get really good at boxing with gloves on and blocking with gloves and understanding where they are in space. You take those gloves off and they lose a little bit of, uh, of that, right? So it's like training with a weight belt. Like you could get good at a weight belt. That means you're not going to be as good without a weight belt. But if you don't train with a weight belt, that means you're not as good as train as other people who train with a weight belt. So whatever you train is what you start to get good at. And if you've always trained and you majority of the time walk with your shoes on and it's been most of your life. Yeah, start with just taking your shoes off. This is going to take years. Yeah. This isn't like, oh, next month I'm going to do this. This is literally years and years and years. I remember you saying with your son. You know, you have a, a your your son now is you know how old is he now? You're now two oh, two years old. You always have kept his shoes off, yeah. and I remember the first time he fell was because he had shoes on. Yeah, because he 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 was used to walking. Oh, he's barefoot. still he's very clumsy with shoes on. It's the funniest thing ever to watch him watch him because now it's I've trained him so much to be barefoot that I can only keep shoes on him for a few minutes, and then eventually he'll he'll sit down and he'll he'll pull them off. Feels weird, I'm yeah, sure. So he, oh yeah, and you can see when he walks around, he's not as fast, he's not as stable when he's got shoes on because he's so used to not having shoes on. And so I've, and some of the family, I know they've seen that. There's like, aren't you worried then? You don't, you don't want him to not be able to do shoes. I said, I'd much rather him be uncomfortable in shoes than uncomfortable barefoot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's got a strong Plus, face. Plus he'll get plenty of opportunities. To work yeah. Yeah, exactly. The, the shoe thing I'm less worried about, it did. It threw him off. The only, the only time he's ever fell was actually the, the first time that Katrina put shoes on him and took for a walk. And then he, he fell forward. Cause yeah, his balance if you've was never off. seen a picture of a hunter gatherer, modern hunter gatherer's feet, just from the top, it does not look anything like <laughs> the average person's foot. Their toes are splayed out, like very strong. They're meaty. gnarly looking. Yeah, and our feet are all like toes smashed. I feel together. like Max's are starting to look like that already. He has like really wide, flat look. At his feet are like this. Mm -hmm. They look like yeah. little hands. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see Courtney the way he has his toes. Sloth toes. It's disgusting. What? <laughs> wow. I'm serious. I'm sure I hope she... you're listening. I... No, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude, you can like spread them out and like, grip things and like like ew. <laughs> <laughs> like, so just don't feed me something with those. Yeah. Hey, did she tickle you under the? Did she tickle you under the covers? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I would, no that's terrible I'd freak out